Hello and welcome to Wilson Rozier Ballpark for this contest between the Union Wildcats and the Farmington Knights. The Knights starting pitcher is number nine, Ethan Grimes. He will have uh, Jordan Ankrum catching for him, Tamir for first base, Jonah Barnes for second base, uh, Brant Busenbark for third base, Logan Winder at shortstop. We're going to have uh, Kobe Moon at left field, Connor Forsyth at center, and Anthony Brakefield at right field. Leading off at the Wildcats, shortstop number one, Tanner Bunch. And here we see Ethan's first pitch of the night. Throw it right down the middle. Easy toss to Tamir for the first out for the Knights. The right fielder, number 20, Nick Schumacher. I'd like to point out that this is Ethan Grimes' second at-home start on the season. And here's his second pitch of the night. It's going to be high. He throws his uh, third pitch of the night, low and outside. Last time he pitched, his first home opener was uh, pretty rocky at first. Uh, we lost that game. But we will see how he does tonight. Last pitch, and it's his first walk of the evening. That puts one runner on base, one out for the Knights. Two up, one down. And he throws his first pitch for the third batter of the evening outside. Making the count 1-0 and oh with one out, one on base. Jordan Ankrum is going to go for the throw out, but Logan Winder misses the ball, and it's recovered by Connor Forsyth in center field. Not sure what happened. I think Logan might have thought Jonah had that throw down. Grimes with the pitch. And he hits one to deep center field. Union will score a run and the hitter will remain at first base. He's going to get a pinch runner here, uh, Bergner. Drew Reed up to bat for the Wildcats here. And Grimes gets ahead in the count here. One strike on the board, one out, one on base, one already scored for Union. Grimes tries to get pinch runner Bergner out at first. He makes it safe. Grimes with the pitch, and it's up to the pitcher's mound, he calls it. Second out of the night. Bergner stays at first. Two down. <laughs> Two 
two down for the Knights in the first inning. So far, Grimes has only let one to score. And Union has been hitting the ball, so I'm anxious to see how the rest of this game goes. Ancrum tries to get him out at first once again, but he is safe. Bergner taking a longer walk off as usual. And he makes it back with a lost ball down the line and he makes it to second. It's already Ingram's second wild throw from behind the plate. It's resulted in the base runners moving up twice now. It's a little bit wide throw there at second. Could have been an out if he would have made an accurate throw. It skipped over into center. This one's skipping over to right. So Grimes with the 2-0 count now. Empty count to the batter. Nasty breaking pitch that time. Ends up high and inside for ball three. And Ankrum will make a quick trout out to the mound to talk to the pitcher Grimes and try to figure out how to bring this together after walking a batter earlier on four straight balls. He's one pitch away from doing the same here against Griffin. Beautiful day here at Wilson Rozier Ballpark. It's been a beautiful couple days for baseball. Tomorrow the Knights will head over to Park Hills for a conference matchup against the Central Rebels. Grimes sets the delivery. It's inside, but gets the call for a strike, so make it 3-1 now as Grimes tries to battle back against this hitter, number six, Griffin, of the Wildcats. Slight lead with the runner at second. Grimes sets and delivers. It's high. And make that a three and two count now. Had it rung out on the scoreboard, so it's a full count now for the third baseman, Griffin, of the Wildcats. And the payoff pitch is delivered. It's a pop-up to the shortstop. Winder, he collects it for the third out of the inning. So after the top of one, Union Wildcats up 1-0 over the Knights. We'll see if the Knights can answer back in the bottom half. Logan Winder here for the bottom of the first for the Knights. He is a switch hitter. He is uh, our shortstop, and he is a pretty darn good one, I must say. And here's the first pitch. 
Winder watches it go by. It's a strike right down the middle. Beautiful pitch. Let's see if he decides to capitalize next time. And it's an outside pitch. He didn't get the call he wanted. It's one and one. That's a fastball. Logan tries to capitalize on it. Picked up by the first baseman for the first out of the evening. Next up to bat for the Knights is Jonah Barnes. Second baseman, Jonah Barnes. Jonah's our second baseman. He is a three-sport athlete. He plays uh, basketball. He did help lead the team to uh, state this year. And he also plays soccer. I never made it to any of the soccer games, but I guess he must be pretty good. But I didn't make it to all of the basketball games last season and he is a darn good basketball player and with the hit he hits it to left field holds off at first and the third batter for the evening for the Knights is going to be at number five Connor Forsyth he is a center fielder One down here in the bottom of the first, one on base. And Connor takes the first pitch. It is low and outside. Jonah makes it to second, but it is a foul ball, so he will have to go back to first. Connor's going to hit again. His count is going to be one and one. Jonah Barnes with the short lead there. Didn't make it anywhere. He's back at first. Connor's got the count of 21 here at the bottom of the second one out. One, bottom of the first, excuse me, one out. And he hits an easy one to shortstop with a fielder's choice of getting him out at first. Jonah remains safe at second. Next, we have Jordan Ankrum, our catcher of the evening. The catcher, Jordan Ankrum. Jonah with a pretty big leadoff, but he's going to take himself back to second. Second baseman creeping into second, hoping to get the out it's a chopper to shortstop he's out at first Jonah's going to round third but that is the last out of the inning
leading off at the top of the second. Center fielder, number 24, Dylan Breeden. Ethan Grimes with the first pitch to Ethan Bre Dylan Breeden at the top of the second. And it's a ball. Fastball up the middle for the first strike, one and one count. Logan Winder with the field and throw to first for the first out here for the Knights at the top of the second. We will have Blake Pickard as the second hitter of the evening. Left fielder, number 23, Blake Pickard. Grimes with the pitch, and it's outside. Second pitch gets past Ancrum. Count one and one here at the top of the second. One out. And he watches the outside pitch go by for a two and one count. He hammers one deep center and gets past Forsyth. He's going to make it to two, and he's going to stay there. It was a great hit, and it's pretty hard to hit a home run here at Wilson Rozier and because it's such a deep ballpark. And he did pretty good. <laughs> Third base for Pickard goes to tag up, and he doesn't go anywhere. That's the second out of the evening for the Knights. Second baseman, number four, Jacob Kreutz. Two outs here for the Knights, and Ethan Grimes delivers the first ball for Jacob Kreutz. One on base here for the Wildcats, and that's the first strike for Jacob. One and one count, two outs, top of the second. Two and one count here. Ethan Grimes delivers. It's going to be foul down the first baseline. Twenty two count here, two outs. One on base. Barely on the outside of the plate to make the count. Three and two full count here 
for Jacob Kreutz with two outs for the Wildcats. And that's going to be Ethan Grimes' second walk of the night. First base and second base are covered. We have Tanner Bunch, the shortstop for the Wildcats, up to bat now. Two outs on the top of the second here. And he's going to hit it to, ooh, an error by Anthony Brakefield gets past him, and one will score. And they're going to hold Tanner Bunch at second. I'm sorry, two will score, and that's going to make the score three to nothing. One on base, two outs here for the Knights. Let's see if our defense can get us out of this top of the second. Nick Schumacher up to bat here. He is their right fielder for the Wildcats. He has two outs, one ball on him here. And he's going to capitalize, hit it down in the left center. One more will score. And the ball gets past Jordan Ankrum. He's going to capitalize, go to second. He's going for third. And he's going to make it easily. He's going to round third, but stay there. And that was the first pitch for Ethan Hughes here in the top of the second. Good block by Ingram, keeping that runner there at third. This count is now 2-0. Two, oh. two outs here. Knights just can't close this top of the inning. Two and two here for Ethan Hughes. He is their pitcher for the evening. And that's going to make it full count. Runner on third, two outs here. Let's see if Ethan Grimes can close this one for the Knights. And he does. And that's three outs for the Knights here. Let's see them come into the bottom of the second and capitalize and get this score tied, maybe even ahead.
Kobe Moon here to lead off the bottom of the second for the Knights. And he's going to take the first pitch right to second. It's going to be and a safe ball. And Kobe's going to run to second here on a pass ball to the first baseman by the second baseman. Beautiful hit. Would have been an out for the Knights the first out of the evening, but an error on second baseman. Jacob Kreutz is going to have him safe at second. Garrett Tamir here for the Knights. Let's see if he can be the anchor here for Kobe and get him home and hopefully get a double for himself. And he's going to take the first ball. Kobe Moon taking a sort of big lead off here. Count 2-0 and oh here for Garrett Tamir. And he's going to take the third ball of the evening. And that is the first strike on Garrett Tamir here for the bottom of the second. Count three and one. And he's going to swing and miss for a full count. And he's going to take ball four for the first walk of the evening by Ethan Hughes. Runners on first and second for the Knights. With Ethan Grimes coming as the third batter for the inning. The Knights already have two on base. They're down with a deficit of four. Let's see if this uh, half the inning they can get back on track. Ethan Grimes is going to try to lay down a bunt, but he's going to tip it back foul for the first strike on him this evening. Ball outside for Ethan Grimes making his count one and one. Garrett Tamir and Kobe Moon on base for the Knights. Both taking decent leadoffs. Let's see if Ethan can get him anywhere. He hits one high and foul. Making his count one and two. He's going to hit one right down second base to the outfield. He's going to get Kobe to third, Garrett to second. Base is loaded here for the Knights for Anthony Brakefield, who is the right fielder for the Knights. Let's see what he can do and see if we can get on the board this evening in the bottom of the second. Of the Knights, number six, Anthony Brakefield. The Knights' bats were kind of dry at the bottom of the first inning but as you can see bottom of the second inning's gone better they came just a little bit late let's see if they can decrease their deficit maybe even get ahead here no outs four to nothing bases loaded here for the Knights and Union calls a timeout their coach coming to the mound. We might see a pitching change, but I do not see. I have not seen anybody in the bullpen, so maybe he's just talking them up here to see if they can increase their uh, defense here, try to get the Knights out of this bottom of the inning as they already have three runners on base.
Anthony's going to take the first strike on him this evening. We're hoping that he capitalizes on something right here, at least get Kobe home, who's at third. And he hits one high and foul, making him two and two. He zero and two, I'm sorry. He's got to protect here. And the pitch he does capitalize on, but it's going to be a catch for their left fielder. Right fielder, I'm sorry, but Kobe Moon will make it safe, and the runners will all advance. It's an out, but it put us on the board here. So one out here, four to one. Wildcats Brent leading. Busenbark. Brant Busenbark here. He has taken Dennis's Pogue. Dennis Pogue's place, I'm sorry, he is normally our starting third baseman, but he broke his thumb a couple games ago, so he's got a lot riding on him here. And his first pitch of the night is going to be high. Second pitch, I'm sorry. Let's count 2-0 and here. And that's going to be a big inside pitch. 3-0 here. Nothing to worry about. Hopefully we can see Brant get on base. Base is loaded again for Logan Winder, who has a switch hitter. And he does. He makes it on base. Base is loaded here. One out in the bottom of the second. Logan Winder, as I said, he's a switch hitter. He's shortstop for the Knights. He's real heavy on singles this season, so hopefully he can get himself a single and we can see if we can get Tamir home, make it four to two. He's going to take his first pitch outside. No runners are going to advance on that one. Catcher got loose of it, but no big deal. Outside pitch there for Logan Winder. He didn't want to take it. Barely made it into his strike zone. It's going to make his count one and one. Good block by the catcher for the Wildcats as Logan takes his second ball. Logan's going to get a good hit out to left center, but it will be caught. And Garrett Tamir is going to be out at home with a very nice throw from the left outfielder for the Wildcats and that's gonna close the second inning four to one Wildcats leading us here
And the Wildcats will come into the top of the third up 4-1. Grimes having a battle through the, both of the innings so far. That one chopped off over to the right side. Knights with the scoring opportunity in the bottom of the second. They just couldn't bring the runners in. And a strong throw there by the Union Wildcats left fielder Blake Pickard was one of the better throws that I've seen so far this season here at Wilson Rozier. Second pitch in from Grimes in the at-bat is a swing and a miss strike. And he's ahead in the count, 0-2 now to the batter, Reed. Grimes sets the windup and the delivery. A nice breaking pitch comes in, just misses the strike zone. It'll make the count 1-2. and two. And over in the bullpen, we've got a couple players warming up. Blake Worley's out there. He could be warming up for third base, could See him come in and make his first appearance from the mound at some point in this game. Grimes able to get the strikeout on Reed. And that will bring up the first baseman, Avery Griffin, number six of the Wildcats. Grimes hoping to make it a fast inning after having to battle through several times through the first two. On deck will be the center fielder, Dylan Breeden. Wildcats first time through the lineup, able to get quite a few hits, mix in a few walks, and route to that four runs that are on the board so far. Graham's third pitch of the at-bat is in. It's a breaking ball, ends up high and inside to take the count two and one. Griffin ahead in the count. Slight breeze from left to right this afternoon here at Wilson Roser Ballpark. And the fourth pitch comes in. It'll make it the count three and one. So Griffin way ahead now. Grimes will have to find a way to battle back. Next pitch is in for a strike, and he does just that to send the count full. And Grimes just a pitch away from. Sending the first two up and two down. And instead it'll be a number off the off to the right side by Griffin. He stays alive. Knights having a frustrating time here at home. They were able to get the win yesterday against North County. It could be argued that the Knights should have walked away with a mercy rule in that game. Instead, it ended up being 10 to 2. That ball sent to the left side. Busenbark over to get it. Ends up going off of his glove for another error by the Knights. The first one, a costly one in right field by right fielder Anthony Brakefield. That cost a couple of runs. Hopefully, that one won't come back to haunt the Knights. As number 24, Dylan Breeden will step in, the center fielder for the Wildcats. Grimes not pitching quite as bad as what the four runs suggest on the board right now, but still has not pitched quite as well as what he should. As we've talked about, he has walked a couple on four straight balls so far in this game. And Breeden sends that one off to the left. Ends up on the track on the left side. So it'll be a long strike for the first pitch of the bat. Got a nice day here at Wilson Rocher. As you can see, the grass is as green as ever for the springtime. We will be having some cooler temperatures next week, but it should warm back up. Knights not with too many home games left on the schedule after this week. As we said earlier, they will be playing at Central tomorrow. That was originally supposed to be a home game, but that got switched around. So the Knights will take one home game off the schedule and... So far, this, I believe, is their fifth home game of the season, and they won't have too many left to go, only two or three left for the rest of the season. That one fouled off to the left side as well, make it a one and two count now on the Wildcat center fielder. Grimes doing a good job in this at bat so far, making sure to get at least around the strike zone to keep Breeden swinging. Avery Griffin over at first for the Wildcats right now. A slight lead to Muir playing close to the bag. 
That one, a nasty breaking pitch, ends up going outside. But the batter swings and misses for another strikeout by the Knights pitcher, Grimes. That'll be two outs here in the top of the third. Still one on for the Wildcats. And coming up to the plate will be the left fielder, number 23, Blake Pickard, who made a great throw to end the second inning for the Knights. Grimes sets and delivers his first pitch, and a pickoff throw down to first base, and he gets him. A great job that time by number 22, Jordan Ankrum, noticing the slight lead by the runner over at first to get his first pickoff of the season here at home, and that'll be the end of the top of the third. We'll see if the Knights can finally answer back. They've got one run on the board so far, down by three. Hopefully they'll be able to get it in the bottom half of the inning here on Night Vision. Jonah Barnes here to lead off the Knights at the bottom of the third. Score four and one in the Wildcats' favor. Let's see what Jonah can do here to lead off the inning. The bottom of the inning, excuse me. So Hughes with the delivery, and it's going to be a ball for Jonah's first pitch of this inning. And he's going to capitalize on the second pitch he receives. And it's going to get past left fielder. Jonah's going to make it to third. He's going to round it, but stay there. Beautiful hit by Jonah Barnes. Let's see what Connor Forsyth can do here. He is a center fielder for the Knights. And Connor receives his first ball. He sits on it, and Jonah's going to stay at second with a slight lead here. And Forsyth is going to hit it out to left field, and Jonah is going to go back, and he's not going to tag up and run. He's going to stay right there. That'll be the first out for this bottom of the inning. And Jordan Ankrum here, the catcher for the Knights, is going to be the third batter. Jonah Barnes taking a decent lead from second base, but not going anywhere. And Jordan Ankrum's going to foul it long and left. Nice block by the catcher for the Wildcats. That's going to be a two and one count for Jordan Ankrum. And he's going to hesitate on that pitch, which is a good idea because that is his third ball for Jordan Ankrum here. Jonah Barnes remains at second, taking leads but not taking them anywhere. 
and he's going to foul another one off left, making it a full count. And he will foul another one up high and right. Right here, I'd like to see Jordan capitalize, maybe get a double and send Jonah home to decrease the deficit here for the Knights. But let's see what he does. He has a three and two count. The delivery is a strike. Jordan swings and foul tips it with a catch. <clears throat> Up next is going to be Kobe Moon for the Knights. He is their left fielder. Two outs on the board. Jonah Barnes sitting at second. going to be a way outside pitch for the first pitch for Kobe Moon of this inning. And he's going to swing to make his count one and one. and one count here for Kobe Moon. And he decides to capitalize on one down right center and their right fielder will make the catch. That is a quick inning here for the Wildcats. The Knights are going back on defense for the top of the fourth. No changes there for the scoreboard, but let's see if the Knights can hold the Wildcats here and go into the bottom and get ahead. And now we're headed to the top of the fourth. The Knights still trailing four to one. Haven't been able to get it going offensively. They've been able to put a few runners on base, get a few in scoring position. They just have not been able to find a way to cross the plate. And the first end to Picard is a ball. Grimes not being able to work too fast through the innings. It has been some lengthy half innings for the Wildcats up at the plate. That one in the dirt. Now we're not even able to make it to the plate. Bounced about three or four feet in front of the plate actually. So it'll be an empty count at 2-0. and oh. The third pitch from Grimes is in for a strike. Make it 2-1 now. And it's the Wildcats left fielder up at the plate. 
Wildcats bottom half of the lineup has actually been able to do some damage today so far. This one hit over to Winder. Winder flips across to Tamur for the first out here in the fourth inning. Coming up for the Wildcats now will be number 28, the third baseman, Trey Fink. So batters once again here at the bottom of the lineup have been able to put some good at bats on the night starting pitcher, number nine. Grimes winds up and delivers. And it will be ball one once again. That's one thing that he's made the mistake of several times so far this afternoon is starting behind in the counts. He's starting behind this one now, 1-0. and oh. The second one in and crosses the plate for a strike, keeping the count up at one apiece. Moderate-sized crowd today. Union, of course, not probably going to bring a whole lot of fans, a little bit of traveling distance going on, especially in comparison to yesterday's game against North County that the Knights were able to win 10-2, to a little bit more sizable crowd. Of course, that is a well-known rivalry here in the area. The rivalry's kind of switched over a little bit. Potosi kind of dropping their name in the hat here recently due to basketball and a little bit of competition with baseball. Knights battled in that one last week, got the 2-1 win. And as I've talked with the co-commentator this afternoon, Sarah LaChance, earlier this week, we talked about the fact that we kind of hoped that the win against Potosi would give the Knights a little bit of momentum, but actually a few injuries have made that uh, a little bit of a difficult transition from last week. A couple of freak injuries occurring for the Knights, and one of those, Dennis Pogue, on a night vision zone, went to bunt the ball. The ball kind of sailed up on him, and he had his he didn't have his hand rotated over or anything, but had it up just enough that the ball sailed up above the bat, hit his thumb, and actually just broke the bone right in half. So not the most comfortable sounding of injuries by far when you've got the thumb taking a 90 mile per hour fastball and coming from Dylan Coleman of Potosi, you can bet that 90 miles per hour might be one of the slower pitches that he would throw during the afternoon if it's a fastball. Grimes starting behind in the count once again, 1-0. One, oh. one out and one on over at first. Even the count up at one apiece for the second straight batter. Once again, a slight left to right wind breezing through here at Wilson Roser Ballpark on a nice sunny day, just a few clouds in the sky. That'll change over the next few days. A little bit of rain expected at the beginning of next week. A bunt attempt, he pulls it back, and the count will go to one and two. So Grimes ahead in the count this time around. With one out on the board, once again, the Knights trailing four to one. A slight, re slight lead by the runner at first. Grimes sets. Winds up and delivers. Gets the ground ball over to Winder. Winder tries to scoop it up to make the out at second and try to turn the double play. But he started thinking about the play a little bit too soon as he doesn't scoop the ball up before t making the throw over to second. So it'll be another Knights error, make it at least three. We had the error in right field by Brakefield, the error over at third by Busenbark, and now one in the middle infield by Wender. That'll bring the leadoff man of the Wildcats, the shortstop Tanner Bunch, up to the plate. Bunch showing bunt and instead misses the bunt. It'll be an 0-1 count on their shortstop. Once again, runners at first and second. So the Wildcats with a chance here to add on to the lead due to the error by the shortstop, number six, Logan Wender. And that one's in a little bit high. Make that number two Logan Winter. Said I said his position number instead of the number on his back. Grimes looking in for the pitch call. He gets it, sets, and fires. It's a breaking ball. Ends up outside. It'll move the count to two and one. So as I've said time and time again, Grimes having to battle from behind in these counts. 
The next one is in for a strike, even it up at two apiece. A big pitch right here by Grimes. Two and two nights with only a three-run deficit, something that they can definitely battle back from. The last thing you want to see is Bunch being able to battle back in this one. Throw down to second. He's back in plenty of time. It'll send the count. And instead, make that a called strike three. Thought that it was a bull a little bit high, but instead the called strike will send him back to the dugout in a big pitch that time from Grimes to make it two outs with two on. And it will be Nick Schumacher up for the Wildcats. The delivery, a beautiful breaking ball by Grimes. Send the count to 0-1. He'll be working ahead against the Wildcats right fielder. Grimes checks the runner at second, sets and fires. Another breaking ball in for a strike. Two beautiful pitches in a row to the right fielder Schumacher. O2 count, 2 on, 2 out. Grimes sets and pitches. Pitch ends up going to the outside corner. It goes off the helmet of the batter. Batter failed to get out of the way, and as Ankrum let go of it, it went straight off the helmet, popped up, and ended up all the way out to Logan Winder. An interesting play to see, say the least. Not something that you expect to see too often. Uh, that's one of those things that uh, about the only time you're going to see it is in high school baseball, I believe. 1-2 count now to the batter. And he delivers, make it that nasty breaking pitch once again to get out of trouble as the throw down, the attempted throw down the third base sent the runners over to second, third. So they end up stranding two in scoring position. And we'll see if the Knights can finally make their way back into this one. We'll head into the bottom of the fourth. Wildcats with a 4-1 lead over the Knights. Garrett Tamir here to start out the bottom of the fourth for the Knights. He's our first baseman. He's going to take the first ball up high in the zone. If we look over to our bullpen, we can see Blake Worley and Nathan Gons both warming up. I think the Knights might see a pitching change here soon. In replacement, um, Ethan Grimes. And here's the third pitch for Garrett Tamir, and he's going to take, ooh, a strike. I thought that was going to be ball three, but it is now a two-and-one count. And he sat on it, and now he's got a 22 count. He's got to protect here. 
Try not to get the first out of the inning. And he does. Swing and a miss. And that'll be out one against the Knights with Ethan Grimes up to bat. He's as well going to take his first pitch high in the zone. And he's going to send a chopper to third. And it's going to be the second out of the evening for the Wildcats. We're going to send our right fielder, Anthony Brakefield, up to bat now. He's had... I believe two singles tonight and an error in the field. So with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth for the Knights, let's see how he capitalizes. And he's going to send one up high and right for the first strike. And he's going to hesitate on that one, making it a one-and-one one count. Hughes with the delivery here. He's going to hit it to short. And that will be the third out for the top of, or the bottom of the fourth, excuse me, taking us into the top of the fifth, four-to-one in the Wildcats' favor. And after a fast bottom half of the fourth, it'll be the pitcher Hughes coming up for the Wildcats. He's actually worked through each inning pretty quickly. He hasn't spent a whole lot of time between batters and usually makes quick work. So his pitch count can't be too terribly high. And speaking of that, he makes a quick at-bat right there. A pop out to the center fielder would be one up, one down for Grimes. That'd be a good thing to see if he could send all three of these first batters back to the dugout for a quick inning for himself. The Knights still trailing 4-1. They haven't been able to find a way to put things together yet. And it, as I said, a very quick bottom of the fourth doesn't make me think that that trend will change anytime soon. Likely it'll be the top half of the lineup due up in the bottom half of the fifth. We've got Busenbark to lead things off, who's the number nine hitter. And then from there, it'll be Winder, Barnes, and Forsythe. Barnes, of course, sending that one nearly to the wall. He had warning track power his last time out. Still yet to see a home run here at Wilson-Roger Ballpark by the varsity team. 
Uh, turning over to JV, we did see one hit by Braden Kraus yesterday here against North County. JV actually over at Ingler Park today playing their game. That one fisted out to left field. He's able to make the play on it, and that is Kobe Moon with the play over his head there in left field. So two up, two down on a couple of pop-outs to the outfield. So they've been able to put a good bat on the ball, just haven't been able to find a hole. It'll be the first baseman, Avery Griffin, now due up for the Wildcats. Grimes on the verge of his first one, two, three inning of the afternoon. The first one in for a strike, a good way to start it off. I said last inning, Grimes having a difficult time trying to get ahead in the count so far. 0-1, oh, even it up at one apiece, ball outside and in the dirt. Both catchers doing a pretty good job of keeping the balls from the backstop today. The catcher for the Wildcats, though, has had to block several. Drew Reed doing an excellent job behind the plate, and both catchers also doing a great job of framing up the pitches, as Ankrum did that time to send the count to one and two. Grimes now ahead in the count once again. A great position for the one, two, three inning on this pitch. Gets it in, it's a little bit low. Nice fastball from Grimes. It was close enough that Griffin could have offered at it and said he holds the bet still for a two and two, two outs. Grimes will wind up the delivery, a nice breaking ball once again. He gone. That'll be the third out of the inning and a great way to get the one, two, three inning on the strikeout to end the fifth. So we'll go to the top of the six. Once again, Knights trailing four to one. And we're going to have number three, Brant Busenberg, third baseman for the night for the Knights, leading off here, and he's going to take a strike, I believe, as his first pitch. And the second pitch, he's going to capitalize, sending it shallow to center, and it's going to be a base hit. Way to start off the inning there for Brant Busenbark. And now we're going to have switch hitter Logan Winder up. He's our shortstop for the Knights. Let's see if he can single out, double out. Get some runners on base. Get some scores on the board. And he'll take his first ball. Outside pitch by Ethan Hughes there to make it a 2-0 count. No outs. And one on base here for the Knights. And a strike. But Logan doesn't catch up with it and 
It'll be a two and one count. Three one count for Logan Winder here in the bottom of the fifth. And he's hit with the pitch, and it's a pass ball. They're going to try to capitalize on this, but they will have Brant stay at second. And now Jonah Barnes up for the Knights. And the Wildcats call a timeout. I think we might be seeing a pitching change here. And we don't. We're going to see Ethan Hughes on the mound still. Two on base for the Knights. No outs. Jonah Barnes up to bat. He's going to take an outside pitch for a 1-0 count. And as you can see, the runners are taking small leads here. And the second outside pitch for Jonah Barnes. Cat here for Jonah. No big threat here. And the first strike on him on the bottom of this inning. 3 1 count. Still a big lead here. He is way ahead in the count. And he's going to take a inside pitch for ball four. And that'll take it to the bases loaded here for Connor Forsyth. And he'll take an, a strike on the outside of the plate for his 0-1 count at the bottom of the fifth. And he's going to send one right past shortstop. That'll score one. And it's going to score two with the first baseman cutting it, sending it back to second but he will remain safe at second. And that puts us more on the board, four to three here. Still in the Wildcats' favor, but finally we have made it across the plate. Sending up t number 22, Jordan Ankrum. No outs here, two on base. Knights have finally scored, decreasing their deficit just by one. We're going to see a pitching change here for the Wildcats. Thank you. 
And after that pitching change, we're going to see number 22, Jordan Ankrum, catcher for the Knights, up to bat with runners on first and second. No outs here. The Knights have scored this inning. I'd like to see this rally to keep going. No outs is pretty decent here. And he's going to set up for a bunt, and it's going to get past the catcher, and they are going to make it home here for the Knights. Jonah Barnes. And we're going to send Connor Forsyth to third base here. That is going to tie us up four to four. And I'm liking what I'm seeing here. The Knights were down for about four innings there. And now we finally came back, tied it up. I'd like to see what the Knights do now with no outs. Tied score here, runner on third. Jordan Ankrum is going to take the second ball. And Bergner with the delivery. Jordan's going to send one to shortstop. Connor's going to stay, and Jordan will make it safe. We're sending Kobe Moon up to bat here. Runner on first. Runner on third. We're sending in pinch runner Braden Bond here for Jordan Ankrum. And Coach Hibbett's talking to Kobe Moon probably about what he's going to do here up to bat to get Connor home so we can get the lead here. Connor taking a small lead here. Braden taking just about the same. With a delivery, he's going to take a ball down low for his per first pitch of this inning. And that will be an Enfield single for Kobe Moon, and he's going to send Connor Forsyth home, increasing our score four to five here for the Knights. We have finally taken the lead for the first time this game. We're going to send Garrett Tamir, our first baseman, up to bat. Runners on first and second. No outs here for the Knights. And he's going to set up for a bunt, but he's going to pull away for the first ball. Good job. 
Braden Bond taking a pretty decent lead here at second. And Garrett Tamir is going to bun it out on the right side. Giving him a one and one count here. And we have Garrett Tamir here, one and one count. And he's still setting up for a bunt, but he'll pull away for the second ball. Garrett's going to leave his bat out there for a 2-2 count. He is one of two sophomores on the varsity team here. Him and Brant Busenbark are both coming up as sophomores. Garrett, or, excuse me, Garrett Tamir has been the starting first baseman the whole season here for varsity. And Brant has come up, as we said earlier, Dennis Pogue got injured. But Garrett has been pretty successful and helped the Knights very much so here. So it's kind of nice to see somebody younger come up and play at this level. And he's going to hit one out deep center. Will be caught. Brandon's going to tag up, but not going to go anywhere here. Ethan Grimes up to bat here for the Knights. Once again, runners on first and second here. One out. Looks like Wildcats are going to be making a outfield change. Their left, their right fielder is going to go to center, and we're going to bring in somebody for right field. Bergner sets up here with the pitch. Ethan Grimes is going to take a chopper to second base. And it's going to be an error on the second baseman. And it will get past the first baseman, advancing all the runners and putting another score, another runner on the board, excuse me, making it a 6-4 to four lead for the Knights. Advancing the runners to second and third base here. Anthony Brakefield up to bat, one out. Should have been two, but with a pass ball at the first baseman, we're going to see how many more runs we can score up here on the board. And they're sending in a pinch runner, number 25, Brendan Ferris for Ethan Grimes here. And Anthony's going to send the first pitch up and out on the right side. With Kobe Moon on third base and Brendan Ferris on second. Two runners in scoring position with one out here. And Anthony sends one up high and deep to right field, but they will be caught. Kobe Moon to tag up and will make it home easily, keeping Brendan at third base that's going to increase us seven to four here at the bottom of the fifth with two outs Brant Busenbark here the other sophomore I was talking about earlier he is our third baseman and he's going to chop one off right
and he will leave one on the outside of the plate for his second strike. Two outs here, seven to four. We have one runner on base. And he's going to take the outside pitch for the first ball of his at bat. He's going to send one high and shallow to right center, and it will be caught for the third out here for the Wildcats, making it out of the fifth inning, 7-4 to four for the Knights. And now we'll come into the top of the sixth inning with a different look on the mound. It'll be number 24, Blake Worley, his first time making an appearance here at Wilson Roser Ballpark this season. He'll start off the inning with number nine, Groff, in his first plate appearance. So a fresh arm and a fresh bat to start the sixth inning. Knights putting a few runs on the board and gaining their first lead. Ahead by three runs. And Worley sets, winds, and the delivery. And Worley ends up in the follow through of his motion. He's a little bit slow and we we're talking about that in between innings as he was warming up. It's something that if the right ball comes right back at him, it could be a dangerous position to be in for the junior pitcher. So that's the windup and the delivery. It's in the dirt. So it'll be a quick at bat by Groff and he'll make the trot down to first base. And right behind him will be the left fielder Number 23, Blake Pickard. And already after one batter, assistant coach Green coming out to talk to Worley real quick. We've talked about the springtime temperatures and the springtime feel. Uh, yesterday on J98, they were talking about some of the springtime friends that that brings with it whether it be the wood bees or the wasp that continue to fly around our heads here in the crow's nest at Wilson Roser Ballpark. Always fun to be ducking back and forth in the middle of all of that. It's been something that this crow's nest has been home 
too for years and years. I remember back when my dad first started teaching at Farmington, he was announcing the games and had to do the same thing back then. So uh, this press box has been home to many of the favorite spring insects throughout the years. After the mound meeting, Worley gets a strike to go ahead. 0-1-1, pop-up foul comes back and Ankrum able to make the play, so Worley will get his first out of the inning. And that'll bring up the third baseman of the Wildcats, number 28, Trey Fink. And the Wildcats, ever since the second inning, have been held quiet at the plate. They've been able to put a few runners on, but the Knights pitching has been able to limit the damage and hold the Wildcats to four runs. Worley with the wind up the pitch, it's inside. Fink had to duck out of the way of it a bit, throw his arms up in the air to avoid getting hit on the elbow. So it'll be an empty count at 2-0 for the pitcher, Worley. He winds and fires. That one looked to be pretty good, just a little bit too high. So make it a 3-0 count. Wind up and the pitch, and that one nearly does hit him. And... Yeah, that'll send him to first, and it looks like instead it ended up going off the umpire, so Ankrum will go out to Worley and give the umpire a little bit of time to recover from getting hit by the ball. Not exactly sure where it caught him. All I know is it ended up in the dirt. When it ends up in the dirt, it might have hit you in a place where uh, you'll need a few minutes to catch your breath. I will say, uh, you know, I've only done Little League during the summer, but any time that you catch a ball when you're not expecting it, uh, it doesn't feel good no matter where it ends up catching you at. But uh, by the way he's squatting down there, you can tell that it, it hit him in a tender spot wherever it was. So Wildcats will have runners at first and second now, so they'll have a little bit of a threat on now right after the Knights were able to take their first lead of the game. Once again, score 7-4 here in the top of the sixth. And it will be number four, Kreutz, with his first time facing Blake Worley. Worley staring in. He's... Once again, behind in the count, 1-0. That one in the dirt, and nothing looking too good so far from the new pitcher, number 24, Blake Worley. That's one thing that I can definitely say. Worley has struggled here at home this season. He's made a few errors over at third. So far, not the most be beautiful attempt at pitching. So once again, an empty 2-0 and o count with two runners on. The wind up the pitch, and that one once again in the dirt, make it an empty 3-0. and o. And Worley, with the possibility of loading up the bases with only one out for the Wildcats, and Wildcats will have the top of the lineup, so definitely not the time that you want to load the bases up, as the Wildcats should be bringing their best hitters to the plate after Kreutz, and that one down the middle for a strike. Kreutz taking all the way that time around. Kreutz settles back in, Worley looks in, gets the sign, sets, and delivers. It was a bunt attempt that time, ends up going foul, so that'll send the count full. Worley able to battle back in this one and has the chance to get another out here and try to avoid some serious damage that could come from just gaining the lead and possibly giving it right back up. So the full count, Worley looks in, gets the sign, sets, he delivers, it's in for a strike, the throw down to third, he's in safely, so it'll be a stolen base, and it's actually a double steal, but Worley is able to get the big needed strikeout. And that'll bring Tanner Bunch, the shortstop, the leadoff hitter for the Wildcats. 
And the Knights once again clinging on to that three-run lead right now with two runners in scoring position. Where it winds up and it's fouled straight back. Worley will start ahead in the count 0 and 1. This is one thing that we have not seen too often throughout the evening is starting ahead in counts. Worley, that one could have been a little bit inside, but the better bunch took a swing anyway. Ended up going off the handle of the bat, and it'll send the count to 0 and 2. Worley now in a comfortable position despite two runners on. Worley winds up, fires it in, gets it in the dirt. It'll end up going to the backstop, and that'll plate one run. So it'll be taken down to a two-point lead now for the Knights and send the count to one and two. And just as I say, it's a comfortable position. Blake not pitching like it was the most comfortable out there on the mound as he sent that one into the dirt. One, two, count, two out. The runner now over at third. Gets a little grounder over to the second baseman. Flips it over to Demure, and the Knights get out of the inning and strand the runner over at third. So we'll head to the bottom of the sixth with the Knights up seven to five. And here we are, bottom of the sixth, leadoff hitter here, Logan Winder, switch hitter once again. Knight still leading seven to five here, as they only allowed one run last inning, as we brought in the new pitcher, Blake Worley. And the first pitch for Logan Winder is gonna be a ball outside. And Bergner with a delivery here, and it's going to be a strike that bl that Logan is going to swing at to the center fielder, and it's going to be the first out of the bottom of the inning here. Jonah Barnes here, the second batter of the evening, the second baseman of the evening. Let's see, let's see what he can do. I'm sorry, I was startled by a bee. <laughs> let's see what he can do here. Pitching change here for the Wildcats. They're going to bring in Breeden. 
for the Wildcats. And we're going to start this new pitcher off with Jonah Barnes, as Logan Winter has already gotten out for the inning. We can see Brett Mann warming up in the bullpen here. Maybe uh, another pitching change in, in the future of the Knights. And the first pitch for Dylan Breeden here for the Wildcats is going to be low. It's going to hit right before the plate here for Jonah Barnes. And then he's going to deliver an outside pitch to make the count 2-0 here. One out in the bottom of the sixth. Five to seven here in the favor of our Knights. Jonah Barnes is going to watch another ball go by. Low in the zone, and he's way ahead here in the count. And the first strike for Dylan Breeden here, making it a three and one count for Jonah Barnes. And that will be the first batter and the first walk for Breeden of the evening. Next, we're going to have Connor Forsyth, the second batter Breeden is going to face. Let's see if he adjusts any and see what things he does different here. And the delivery is going to be a ball outside. He's going to try to pick Jonah off at first, but Jonah's back in plenty of time with time to spare. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Connor's going to decide late to hit it. going to hit it to shortstop, and it's going to be an error on the shortstop. No out. Thought that was going to be a fielder's choice at first. That's the way his momentum was going, but he lost it. That's going to make it... Runner on first and second. One out here for Jordan Ankrum. And that'll be strike one on Jordan Ankrum.
both runners here taking decent lead. And Jordan Ingram's going to foul one off third baseman line. And he's going to foul one back for a one and two count. Good eye by Jordan Ankrum as he takes the third ball, making it the count full here with two runners on base, first and second. One out. And he's going to get the second walk of the inning by Dylan Breeden, making bases loaded here for Kobe Moon. And Ankrum's going to get a pinch runner here, Braden Bond. Kobe almost getting hit in the helmet there with that pitch makes the count two and zero. Oh. And one right up the middle for Kobe Moon's going to score two runs here. Easily Connor Forsyth and Jonah Barnes are going to make it through. Making it five to nine in the Knights favor with Garrett Tamir up. Two runners on base. Nice hit by Kobe Moon especially for this bottom of the sixth inning as we're getting close to a close. That's going to be really nice to put icing on the cake for a win tonight if the Knights can do it and hold their defense. And Braden Bond's going to steal third easily. Not easily, I'm sorry. He's going to slide in and... If you would have asked me, I probably would have called that an out, but it was safe. And Kobe Moon's going to steal second. Easily as there's a runner on third. As you can see, Dylan Breeden has been pitching pretty outside for these right-handed batters. And it's putting him down in the count and putting us nights up, which I'm not complaining about. But there's Garrett Tamir with a chopper to third. He'll be out at first. As their third baseman was good about looking the third, the runner on third back and then throwing him out at first. That's so going to be two outs on the board. With Ethan Grimes up to bat here, runners on second and third.
He's going to take a strike for his first pitch of the inning. And Braden's going to put one in the dirt right before home plate for first ball of the inning. First ball of the batter of the inning. <laughs> and Ethan's going to foul tip one down the first baseline. And Ethan's going to swing and a miss for the third strike and the third out of this inning. And some enter Sandman as we go here into the top of the seventh. Hopefully the final inning. Of course, enter Sandman was the song that Yankees closer Mariano Rivera would come into the game with to close out the game. So that's a song of choice when the Knights are leading heading into the seventh inning, hoping that we will enter the same way that Rivera typically did. We'll come into the seventh inning, we'll quickly get the outs that we need, and we'll get the win. Uh, so far, with the pitcher Connor Forsythe's first, first batter to face right now, he's a quick, empty 3-0 count. And the batter is number 20 of the Wildcats, Schumacher. Make that a quick walk. To Schumacher. Schumacher started the day in right, and I believe he might have switched over to center earlier when one of the pitchers came in, but it'll now be number 32, Ethan Hughes, the starting pitcher for the Wildcats today, who is in line for the loss after the bad fifth inning that he had. Well, Knight's trying to escape this one with a win. 9-5 the score in favor of the Knights. The delivery is in for a strike. That'll be the first strike from Force, Foresight so far this evening. Hey! 
Another pickoff attempt over at first base. That's two pickoff attempts in a row. Saw one of those last setting, trying to work it on the Knights. So far, the only pickoff attempt has actually came from, or the only successful pickoff attempt was from Jordan Ankrum. And Ankrum takes the strike from Foresight. That'll be an 0-2 count. So after throwing four straight to the first batter, he's thrown two straight strikes to the second. Another pickoff attempt back in plenty of time. So 0-2, one on, no outs here in the top of the seventh for Foresight. Foresight delivers. It's a foul ball. Ends up going over to his coach and we'll set it back. Foresight Takes a long look over at first, delivers the pitch in, and ends up a bit outside, maybe a little bit low as well. So it'll send the count to one and two. Foresight still ahead. Foresight sets, winds up, delivers. It's low, even the count up at two apiece. So Hughes battling back here after going down 0 oh and 2. He's got a runner over at first, hoping to move that one over and cut into this four-run deficit that the Wildcats are currently facing. He'll send the count full, so he's battled all the way back here with the chance to put a runner in scoring position with the walk. Foresight looks in and finds the strike zone, but it's sent to the opposite side. Right fielder, great throw over to third, but not in time. And at the same time, Hughes thought about taking off for first uh, with the strong arm there in right field, and that was Ethan Grimes, today's starting pitcher, that threw the ball all the way across. That's something that we didn't see too often last year. The outfield arms kind of lacking for the Knights a season ago, but that was a strong throw from right all the way over across the diamond to third. And now stepping in will be Drew Reed. He's the cleanup hitter for the Wildcats, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do in this position now with runners at the corners, nobody out. And the Wildcats threatening here is Foresight gets in trouble in his first two batters that he faces here in the seventh. Next is in for a strike once again, so he'll start off this at bat the same exact way as the last batter that he faced, an 0-2 count. This time the only difference is there's a runner over at third base. Looks over, delivers the ball, it ends up low and in the dirt. Anchor him, able to make the blocks and the count to one and two. Sun's starting to set here at Wilson Roser Ballpark, so a little bit more shade than what we started the game with. Still that left to right breeze. Next pitch is in and outside, even the count up at two and two. So it's really an instant replay of the Hughes at bat that we saw just a second ago. Hopefully it doesn't end the same way with a hit through the right side of the infield. Next pitch is there. This one's grounded over to third base, throws it across the diamond, gets the out. So the Knights are able to get the out, but they also allow a run to score. That'll make it 9-6 now. And it will be Avery Griffin coming up, the starting first baseman for the Wildcats. So the cleanup man doing exactly what you hope he can do. Reed being able to bring the run in. Foresight sets, he fires, it's high. Ends up about shoulder level to Griffin, and Griffin... Pretty tall individual. Don't know exactly the height. They don't have that listed on their lineup. It does seem to be one of the taller batters in their lineup. And I'll even the count up at one apiece as he started to show bunt for a second and instead pulled it back. Not sure if you would expect him to bunt here, but that might be the perfect time to bunt. And that one's popped up over to the right side to Muir with plenty of room, but we've seen him try to make a play over there earlier this season and for the second time he's unable to make the play on the foul ball 
can be a tricky one to play in foul territory, especially when you're trying to keep an eye on the fence, trying to get to the fence and then look up and find the ball and you know, trying to position yourself just right. That one ended up going a little bit further down the right field side than what he expected. So the one-two count. Forsythe checks the runner at second, looks back into home, delivers the pitch. It's a breaking pitch, ends up a little bit outside. Not a bad pitch at all, though. Ended up looking like it could have came in there on the outside corner, but curved and tailed away. Four ball two. Two and two count fouled straight back. And Griffin able to battle on this one with one out. Runner at second. Knights only ahead by three. Forsythe gets the sign he sets and instead turns around and checks on the runner at second. His next throw is in and he punches him out. He give him the strikeout. Each night pitcher at least with one today. Worley, Grimes, and now Foresight. Uh, stepping in will number, be number 24, Dylan Breeden. And with two outs, the Knights now only an out away from getting out of this one with the win. one of the count, two outs, runner at second. Forsythe sets and delivers straight down the middle for strike one, even the count up at one apiece. And at this point, you just want to make sure that you throw the pitches in the strike zone, try to get out of this one. Once again, Knights only up by three with the runner over at second. So the tying run is on deck. Foresight sets and delivers. It's a little bit inside, close to the strike zone, but just enough inside. Wasn't able to catch the black of the plate. It'll send the count to three and one. Slight lead by the runner at second. Not going to take too much at this point because his run is not the one that matters. Battles back for a full count. Foresight with the chance to end the game on a strikeout. 3-2, two, two outs. Pitch comes in. Gets it over to the shortstop. Winder. Winder scoops it up. Flips it across the diamond. And the Knights... Able to nail down the victory. Nine, six through seven innings. Took three pitchers to get them there. Grimes ends up with the win. Worley came in in relief. And ending the evening would be Foresight. So the Knights end up with the nine, six win. A great win for the Knights as they're able to battle from behind in this one. They were down four to one until the fifth inning when they were able to play a total of six runs. Able to add a couple of more in the sixth and nail down the 9-6 victory. Thank you for joining us this evening here on Night Vision Media. It's been Aaron Murray along with side with Sarah Lachance, J.C. Mosher as the producer, and Daniel Turner running camera. Thank you for watching. <laughs>